Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 reads, The wages of sin is death. Our Old Testament lesson today, we see a very, very, very vivid picture of that sin equaling death. Earlier on in our text, we're seeing the king of Arad, who has sinned against the Lord because he picks a fight and he fights against Israel. The result is the total annihilation of the king and his nation. Therefore, the place was called Hormah, which means utter destruction. But they were enemies of God. It's funny, when we see this in the Old Testament, we think immediately, well, they're, they're enemies of God. What did they expect? I mean, they sinned against our God, and that's going to get you a bit of a whooping. It's a pretty good whooping, too, after all. Isn't that what a God is for? If he can't rain down a little brimstone every once in a while, he's not being very productive. <clears throat> we see as the text moves forward, the Israeli citizens are not so much better off than the king of Arad. Here in the same section, we see that the people of God are also fighting against God. And when they do, they sin against God. They speak evil of God. They speak derogatory of God. And we see that the Israelites are treated in the same way as the foreigner is treated. Sin equals death. The people start complaining about God. They say, why has he brought us out into this wilderness to die? What a silly and flagrantly stupid thing to say, especially considering all that they have been through. The people are growing impatient, and impatience breeds stupidity and irrational thinking. Why did you bring us out here to die? Their uncontrolled emotions has broken their thinking, which has led to inappropriate behavior. I mean, God has just annihilated the king of Arad. They are not even close to dying. They are not in any danger at all. And yet they still don't like their circumstances. They say there's no water. Well, they're not really that far away from the Sea of Reeds. Number two, Moses keeps bringing water from the rock. They have a source of water. And there's no food, they say. It's funny, they, I love this line. They go, there's no food. And we detest this detestable food. So you have food, you just don't like it. And they're like, hey, we don't need food. You forget what they're talking about here. Food. What food are they talking about? They're talking about the manna. They're talking about the manna of life that rains down on them every day. All they have to do is go out and pick it up. It's the bread of life that keeps falling every night. We have no food. Life for Israel has never been so easy. It's certainly not been any easier in the last 400 years when they were slaves in Egypt. All they have to do is what God tells them to do. Life's never been so easy. Israel's never been so satisfied. And yet, we find them here muttering and grumbling against God. And thus we see that they too are under the penalty of sin. Every person is under this penalty of sin. Every single one of us is born under this penalty of sin. We are born into this world having already been bit by that fiery serpent and destined to die. We have been poisoned. We've been poisoned by sin. And we are destined to die. Paul says to the Romans and us, <clears throat> are we any better today? Are we any better than those Israelites who grumbled against their God and there's no water and we hate this detestable food? No, we are still impacted, greedy little people that we are. We too are under this power of sin. None of us are righteous. None of us have understanding. All of us have turned away from God. All of us have sought our own answers to our own issues and our own problems. We have used our tongues to hurt and deceive. 
We have deceived ourselves. We're swift to, to correct others and slow to look upon ourselves as the source of our issues, of our problems. God could have ignored Israel. He could have left them in Egypt. He didn't have to rescue them. He could have cut them loose right there. And yet he doesn't. Instead of cutting them loose as he could have, he sent them snakes. You gotta love God in the Old Testament. He really has a, a way with solving problems. He sent some snakes. Nothing shakes a person out of their slumber like a good little dose of reality. The people indeed, when they actually indeed begin to die in the wilderness, they then turn to God, confessing their sins and awaiting God's answer. And God's answer is, is very odd. They ask Moses to talk to God to take away the fiery serpents, and God tells Moses, to make another snake. As if there's not enough snakes in the camp already. Make another snake. Make a bronze snake and set it up in the middle of camp. This bronze, this metal snake speaks of justice and mercy. The people have prayed, take away the snakes and God doesn't do what they ask, not in the way that they ask it anyway. The method was to overcome the poisonous death was by faith. The way to overcome the poisonous bite of the serpent is to look up in faith. Interestingly enough, the bite remains. But look upon the brass serpent and live. Look and live, that was the answer. The answer to the fiery serpent was not to ignore the bite. The answer was not to beat the serpents down. The answer was not to apply any sort of medicine, not by, by fleeing from the affected area. It was through faith in this promise of God that salvation would come unto you if you simply looked to the uplifted serpent and looking to God in faith and trusting in this promise, you would not die. The serpent, by the way, was not lifted up in some hidden corner. The serpent was not put someplace far away so that they would have to make a pilgrimage. There was no, no hidden cave that they had to go. They didn't have to take a train ride to go find this snake. It was not hidden in the cleft of a rock. This, this serpent was, was planted and lifted up right there in the, in the middle of the camp for all to see. This is why God continues to plant his churches in all the downtowns in every small church, in every small town you can, you can imagine. Even here in downtown Oak Brook, a neighborhood of Somerville, there's what, six churches that God has planted here? For we to look up and see faith established and delivered unto the communities of, of which we serve? Christ is available. He's available to everybody. Jesus is not far away, as some have assumed. He is not hidden. He is not hard to find. He is not impossible to understand. He has, he has put his words and given them to us black and white on a page, just as easy to read as anything can be done. God says, whoever would choose, just look up and be saved. Let them look. Let them look and let them live. Salvation will cost you nothing. It cost the Israelites nothing to look up and live. One uplifted serpent was enough for the entire camp, and Christ alone is enough for your entire salvation. You need nothing more. The dying were not saved by looking up at the serpent and then keeping the law. The dying were not saved by looking up at that serpent and then bringing a sacrifice. The dying were not saved by looking up at the serpent and then promising to do more. They were saved and they were saved by faith and they were saved by faith alone. Faith in the promise of God. Who could ask for anything more? It took place when the sinner looked at Christ by faith, looked to Christ in death and resurrection 
It's not a, a little bit of time. It doesn't happen a little bit over, over a little bit, a little bit here and a little bit there. It is instant. It is immediate. It is complete. The salvation of God is completed in our baptism, completed in our looking to Christ and living. It is, it is a whole salvation of, of mind, body, and spirit. Thoughtless people used to say that all roads lead to Rome, and in the same way they said all roads lead to salvation. Bullocks. The roads are not all the same. They are not all the same. They're, some of them are... Some of them are heading the exact wrong way. There's only one way of salvation in the camp of Israel. There was only one salvation in the nation of Israel. And the same is written to us today. Look and be saved. Look unto Christ and have your sins washed away. Be blessed by the salvation of your God. We have the assurance of this blessed promise through God's word that anybody that looks to Christ will live. And it was Jesus, the uplifted Savior, who pleaded on behalf of the people. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of unbelief is death. The wages of faith, life everlasting. Look up and live. In Jesus' name, amen.